Ka'ahumanu's birth was much like her life, entangled in political intrigue and turmoil. Her mother, Namahana, born of high rank in the lineage of Maui's chiefs, married rival chief Ke'eau Moku from the island of Hawaii, thus giving him the advantages of her status and her lands in central Maui. Maui's ruler, Kahekili, considering this a threat to his power, attacked Namahana and Ke'eau Moku and their retinue at Waihe'e, chased them to Moloka'i, and finally to Kauiki. It is said that Ka'ahumanu was born at a place called Mapuena in a small cave on the side of Kauiki they called Paliuli. On March 17, 1768, the baby chiefess first opened her eyes. Where the wind rushes at the foot of the famous battle hill of Kauiki here in Hana. Ahumanu's birth, she was presented with the symbols of royalty, which would signify her authority and be carried by her throughout her life. Ka'ahumanu was later taken to a place called Kaniomoku in Kauai Papa, asserting the baby's rights to Maui lineage. Ka'ahumanu's family named her after their foe, Kahikilinui Ahumanu. and your whole family will bow in your presence. Oh, 
Kulu mele mele Le Hawaii Iko inoa E aka e ka i me ka mahi E ala na kini o ka aina Ho o ka hi pu'u wai me ka lo ka hi E ola ka inoa o ka ahu manu E i a kou lei E lei a i Na ke aloha Lave mai nei Le ho o heno Mau i a nou E o la ka inoa O ka ahu manu The continued pressures of war forced her family to relocate to the island of Hawaii when Ka'ahumanu was at a young age. Ka'ahumanu spent her childhood at the court of King Kamehameha, where her father, High Chief Ke'eo Moku, wise and accomplished, was one of Kamehameha's most trusted royal advisors. Being a close friend of Ke'eao Moku, Kamehameha observed from a distance as Ka'ahumanu matured from a child into womanhood with great interest and admiration. He not only knew that what he saw was pleasant to the eye, and beautiful of soul. He also recognized and appreciated her intelligence as well. Ka'ahumanu was arranged to marry Kamehameha, and so Kamehameha took Ka'ahumanu as his wife when she was at a young age. Kamehameha had numerous wives, but Ka'ahumanu would become his favorite. He treated her as if she were a goddess. She was the one who encouraged her husband's war of unification of Hawaii, Ka'ahumanu no Kamehameha. Thereafter, as his favorite, Ka'ahumanu was always by his side, sharing his triumphs, his defeats, his joys and sorrows. Six feet tall, bold, fiery and beautiful. Ka'ahumanu has no equal in Hawaii's feminist history. A handsome woman, she enhanced her appearance in the Hawaiian way by tattooing her legs, hand, and tongue. Her 
Hers was a tempestuous marriage between two obstinate, fiery-tempered individuals, but who seemed to have a genuine love between them. Ka'ahumanu was described as wife and love mate. The royal couple spent long hours together, talking, smoking pipes, and surfing. More importantly, Kamehameha carefully listened to the counsel of this strong-willed and uncommonly intelligent woman throughout the turbulent years of his ascendancy and rule. It was said that Kamehameha's long control of the government was due to his wife alone. Through her, all the chiefs became reconciled to Kamehameha, to whom she was devoted. She forced the chiefs to follow Kamehameha because of her powerful connections. The chiefs had the utmost confidence in her, and her commands were uniformly obeyed. Ka'ahumanu herself was a noted warrior going with Ka Kamehameha into the very heart of battle. Her entire life had been lived in the atmosphere of war and conflict. เฮฮาเลฮูอาเฮฮาเลฮูโนยานาคาโนเอโฮคาโนเยอโนอินเฮอาลีอันเฮฮอยอไตติมัยไตติมัยโนเออะฮิติปูโนเมเฮอะโล
Kamehameha had become supreme ruler over all the islands. He was supported by his favorite wife, Kaahumanu, her father, High Chief Keeao Moku, senior counselor to him, and foreigners who traded iron goods, spears, cloth, and rum. Kamehameha successfully unified the islands with Kaahumanu alongside of him. She became one of Hawaii's most powerful figures. There was a week-long victory celebration feast with Kamehameha and his retinue of men, warriors and foreigners, eating pork, bananas, and other couple foods as was the tradition. Ka'ahumanu, isolated and forbidden to participate and join the men in celebration, was not allowed to enter the hale.
Because of the eating couple placed upon women, she was prohibited from seeing her husband during this time, and Ka'ahumanu began to question and brood over these things in her heart. Following the unification of the islands, Kamehameha watched as Ka'ahumanu developed into the pillar and cornerstone of his kingdom. He gave Ka'ahumanu the right of Pu'uhonua, which allowed her to grant sanctuary to anyone who sought her protection, and the power to repeal a death sentence, making her person a place of refuge where one could find safety. Any condemned person could be saved if she said the word. Her lands were turned into places of refuge. He dealt out death. She saved from death. Ka Kamehameha was confident in Ka'ahumanu's ability to lead and govern his people with the skills she acquired in war and peacetime. In 1819, Kamehameha died. It was tradition that the mourning ritual of the death of an ali'i would include gouging of the eyes, chopping off their hair, breaking their teeth on rocks, and slashing parts of their body. Because of Kamehameha's high rank and greatness, the mourning process was magnified by thousands of his loyal subjects. Prior to his death, Kamehameha created an official post, Kuhina Nui, or Prime Minister, with authority equal to that of a king. Upon his death, it was deemed the late king's wish that she share governance over the kingdom of Hawaii with his son Liholiho, who took the name Kamehameha Elua, Kamehameha II. After Kamehameha, the first death, Ka'ahumanu's power base grew, and she eventually ruled with the title of Queen Regent. She would play a key role in changing the foundations of a kingdom while overthrowing an ancient religion and challenging the religion of the West. The reins of government were in the hands of Ka'ahumanu, and her rise to power intensified. Ka'ahumanu became the driving force 
behind the abolition of the couple system. Ahumanu recalled the victory party of Kamehameha and his men, celebrating the unification of the islands with great feasting and revelry. She remembered feeling secluded, isolated, deserted, forgotten. Kaahumanu knew that in order to rule and move forward, she must be included in all matters of the kingdom. Kaahumanu was ahead of her time and champion the rights of native Hawaiian women. The strong kapu of the Hawaiian religion stifled her, the kapu enforced so no one would anger the gods Kane, Kanaloa, Ku, and Lono, upon whom life and death depended. The kapu system was so charged with mana that in some situations, they could not even walk about the land without rendering all they touched or upon which their shadows fell. Women were not allowed to eat with men. Women were not allowed to eat certain foods like pork, taro, bananas, and coconuts. The consequence of breaking a kapu resulted in immediate death. Ka'ahumanu couldn't help but resent and question these kapu. She united with Keopu Olani, sacred wife of Kamehameha and mother of Liholiho, to eat at the same table with the young king, breaking a major couple and changing the rules of Hawaiian society. Imperialistic and dominating though Ka'ahumanu may have been, the people knew and respected her high rank and obeyed her laws. Greatly disturbed by the restrictions of Hawaiian religion, she persuaded Liho Liho to break the couple of eating forbidden foods and eating with men. Ehana oi, ali hiki na wahine ke ai ke ia mau mea ai, o ke ia ai no na kane vale no. of eating together and breaking the kapu unintentionally cleared the way for the arrival of the Christian missionaries some months later. <laughs> Ka'ahumanu came to know the missionaries and their God. Though difficult at first, she felt for them a deep affection and placed a sublime faith in the new religion they had brought to her land. Ka'ahumanu, together with Liho Liho, challenged the very foundation of Hawaii, the power of the priesthood and the temples. They ordered the destruction of the sacred sites, 
Heyao. The missionaries taught her to read, and she eventually accepted their religious faith as hers. Ka'ahumanu saw in the foreign religion a set of laws which she herself could enforce. She saw herself coming full circle from being a woman with no power over the law to being a woman at the very center of the law. Moreover, she believed that the new way of life advocated by the missionaries was essential for the protection of her people during this time of change. She was anxious to lighten the burdens of her people. Her people were devoted to her. All followed her from the highest to the lowest because of the laws she had made which brought protection to the poorest. In 1824, Ka'ahumanu publicly acknowledged her embrace of Protestant Christianity and encouraged her subjects to be baptized into the faith. That same year, she presented Hawaii with its first codified body of laws modeled after Christian ethics and values. Ka'ahumanu was baptized on December 5th, 1825, at the site where Kawaiaha'o Church stands today. <laughs> Manu fell ill and her health steadily declined. Quoting from a long past memorial, our beloved friend Ka'ahumanu, having completed her last tour around the islands, returned home broken in health 
and evidently hastening to the end of her pilgrimage. More humble, more lovely, more affectionate than ever, every breath was prayer or praise to God for what he was doing for her people. She had been permitted to see them turning to the Lord and professing their faith by the thousands. Ka'ahumanu wished to go to her favorite valley of Manoa and requested the missionaries to accompany her. Here, a bed of maile and avapuhi was prepared, over which was spread a velvet cover, and on this she lay down to die. Her strength failed daily. Reverend Bingham, who was hurrying the New Testament in Hawaiian through the press, had a special copy bound in red Morocco with her name in gilt letters embossed on the cover. When it was handed to her, she looked it through carefully from Matthew to Revelation to satisfy herself that it was all there. And then she wrapped it in her handkerchief. Manu died on the 5th of June, 1832. Her funeral was held at Kawaiahao Church, which she commissioned as the Westminster Abbey of Hawaii. Services were presided over by Reverend Hiram Bingham. She was laid to rest on Iolani Palace grounds but was later moved to the royal mausoleum. Ka'ahumanu moved with tragic majesty. Tragic because it was during her reign that the breakdown of a great native culture commenced. Her wisdom and strength guided the islands in a period of major transition for the Hawaiian people. And her actions profoundly affected the course of Hawaiian history. At her death, she left behind a kingdom unprepared for changes already underway. There was no one equal to fill her place. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
Ka'ahumanu's power was expressed once by a native poet. Let the islands be stilled, the voices hushed in her presence. She, who is like the eagle, press tight the lips, be quiet, hush the voices, speak only in whispers, let it be very quiet. Let not the birds fly, the heavenly one of Loa, the high chiefess, Ka'ahumanu.